Oh man, really? Oh, there we go. All right, so we're gonna play Old Faithful King Pawn. Um, this is my tournament line that I typically play against uh, King's Gambit. Uh, just the King's Gambit declined, activating the bishop because it's difficult for a C D4 to be controlled. Hey, welcome. Yeah, sorry for the abrupt change in pace there. Um, I happen to notice that the computer chess competition, the top ch chess engine competition, which I believe they're still in stage four, right? Or rather, this is like, I saw they have a new structure that they're imposing with this chess engine competition thing, right? Hey, welcome. Yep, thanks for hosting us here. I saw the, like, now there's multiple qualifiers, and so you have m engines that are similarly strengthed playing against each other. Um, so that's pretty cool. I definitely appreciate that. I mean, we've even hosted some chess matches, or engine matches, um, through our broadcast system here. Not that we need to plug that any further, but... Yeah, we're playing some games. Chess is fun, right? Is d4 loose? d4 looks pretty loose. Yeah, absolutely, that's a more exciting format. Let's see. So... I think I'm just winning the d-pawn. If they push d5, I just take the bishop. If they don't push d5, I just take the d-pawn. This is a fun position. <laughs> oh shoot, I don't have the move list. I typically do put the move list there, but I guess we're in Zen mode, and Zen mode doesn't show the move list. Oops. I guess it's more Zen this way. Alright, take my bishop? Pretty. Oh, he's not taking it. Okay, fine. Um, all right, so we've won a pawn. Now, how do we convert this? Um, I think we start with rook e8. Uh, the point is, this is still pinned, and so we're just going to um, exploit the fact that this pawn can't advance. Just bring more and more pressure on it. I have this threat of bishop takes knight, but the threat's stronger than the execution. Okay. Well, that pin's gone. Um, do I just take the knight now? Because now I just win a pawn. I mean, yes, they can capture on b7, but I don't think that works out so great for them. Uh, now, do I take the knight and allow g takes? Or is that just terrible? Like, I think there's pros and cons to that decision. Um, but the biggest con is that this rook has nowhere to go. So I guess I walk into this instead? There's no knight e5 tricks here. There's knight g5, though. And I have to drop the rook back to e7, but that's not terrible. Um, trading bishop for knight feels so much more comfortable, but it's not a good thing here just opens my king to attack. So, yeah, we'll proceed this way. Uh, no, I have not used that particular name before. It needs the little human moving the pieces beneath it, the automaton. Oh, right! Yeah, that's a, that's a fun one. Um, I just got a plain old chessboard here. Oh, wait. Really? You're really playing this. I could just play rook f8 if I don't have anything better. Uh, is queen f6 better? It looks tempting. It's not that great though. Um, do I take on f3? Hmm. Rook f8 opens a lot of tactical possibilities. 
I mean, yes, B7's hanging the whole time, but that's really not the center of attention here. If they take B7, I take F3 and then Knight D2 hitting the bishop and the rook. Like I was saying, um, yeah, if they're paying attention, they spot this thing. Um, oh, yep, sorry to disappoint. Yeah, oh well. So, white's turn. Um, I mean, maybe bishop d5's worth a try, I guess. <laughs> what else does white do here? Yeah, make a committal move and then think the next turn. Okay, there we go. Oh, so I guess you guys were all watching TCEC before, right? So, like, if I were to ask for opinions on the Stockfish and Alpha Zero match, uh, you guys would have opinions. This is how you play an audience, I guess. Uh, but, yeah. Um, and I bet you don't all have the same exact opinion. You have varied opinions about that particular match. I knew it. I'm psychic. <laughs> Might as well ask about politics. Well, okay, and that, no. Okay, we're not going there, but... Um, let's see. Yeah, let's trade queens. Very divisive subject. All right, hardware is greater than programming code. Yeah, hardware is definitely a major factor in um, any kind of computation task. Okay, so you might control a7 and a8, but I control other squares. So, there we go. Victory! Alright, so let's go play a tournament. Um, oh, all these tournaments are ending right on the hour. Oops. Um, should we join one anyway? The hourly Super Blitz Arena? Sure. We're going to win this. We're going to get like 3,000 points in one game. It's going to be lovely. Uh, I helped with a networked tank game. After graduating from MIT, you worked at Harmonix on the various music games. The Eastern Bullet Arena? Oh, you're playing in the Eastern Bullet Arena. Well, okay, if you, if you want me to try to play some bullet, I can try to play some bullet. Oh, we get to play my favorite opening. This is great. Oh! Oh, wait, what do I do here? Uh, it's this one, right? I think it's the other one, but um, this one's okay. <laughs> yeah, let me just offside the knight. And then just push b4 and it's free knight. Boop! Okay. Oh. Well. So you're playing the Eastern Bullet Arena? Do I have that right? Um... I mean, this is, uh, in fairness, this is what happens when you late join a tournament and you get paired against the bottom seed. Okay. Oh, is that not starting in like, okay, I don't know when that starts. But uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you, you'll probably be streaming it or something. This will be my excuse to back out and watch you stream or something. And host you with everybody who's watching this uh, going on. Oh, four minutes. Would you want me to host you with everybody? Or would you want me to try to compete and defeat you there? Or we could do both. Um, uh, opponent is going to win this b2 bishop. I'm going to have to sack it on g7. Alright. But I'm also in time trouble, so I'm not thinking clearly. So let's go back. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Um, 
Yeah, I guess I'll play in the Eastern Bullet Arena just because I don't play Bullet often. Um, I mean, I'm more. I've been streaming for hours here. I'm more than glad to hand over viewers. But if other people want to see me actually try to play Bullet, that could be fun too. Um, okay. We're gonna see 95. We're gonna see 95. There it is, 95. Queen e5, queen e5, queen c3. This is like guess the move. A thing I wish that Lee Chess actually had. Alright, bishop f6. Uh, close enough. Okay, defend our pawn. Yeah, TCEC uh, hosted us with a pretty large host. Some of the people might be here, um, have, might have been automatically directed here from the TCEC page. They have a separate page where they run all their tournaments, and it has a Twitch frame uh, showing the chess moves that are played by all the various engines. Um, oops, this is not good. This is not good. We'll pretend it's good. Um, maybe we can bluff the opponent. We're up on time, guys. That's. I can actually put King H1. This might not be terrible. The question is, do I throw in F6 first? Um. I I cannot move my mouse fast enough to play anything faster than bullet. This mouse tends to put pieces on the wrong squares. It's a lot of fun, uh, this mouse. Um, all right, I forgot about that. But we're going to win on time. Boop. Oh. Okay, that's a move. Alright, so... Yeah, Eastern Bullet Arena, here we go. No need to see our standing in that tournament. Come on. Let me join. Let me join. We gotta beat Ace Rook, guys. <laughs> Alright. How to beat some Ace Rook here. And I was just talking about, like, chess should be fun, but at the same time, like, Nine, I play too much hope eight, chess. Seven, this is not going to do any wonders for that. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. At least I can hear when the pieces move, so that's a good thing. Alright. Here we go. Oh, this must be Ace Rook. Wait, no. I don't know. He wouldn't play the French, but still. Like, who else could have this speed? Uh, King here, I guess? Interesting. Oops, this doesn't quite work. It looked really convincing until I played it. Yeah, this is just a sacrifice on my part. Whatever, it looked cool. Um... Hmm. Well, that's not good. Also not very good.
All right. Yep, Acer got us. Whew. Okay. I guessed correctly. Sorry. Um, I'm playing in the Eastern Bold Arena. If you'd like to play, if you want us to have a chance of getting matched, we're going to... I don't know. There's too many people in this arena, though, to hope to get any one pairing. But... Um, yeah, Acer got us at the end there. That was pretty close. For him being a Lee Chess Master, you'd think um, that would be a more one-sided affair. Um, but yeah, thanks for the invitation. We're just going to play the arena in the hopes that getting another Acer pairing. Um, we need to get all the Acer pairings, if only to try to beat him at his own event. Um, okay. Oops. Yeah, that's not good. Alright, we'll concede that. We're 0-2, guys. We're losing all the bullet points. We're in last place. Oh, well. Uh, that one's entirely on me. That had nothing to do with the mouse. That's just me being distracted, trying to impress an audience. Oh, crud. Uh, okay, d5? No d5. Okay, that's more reasonable than d5. Didn't say it was good, but it looked reasonable. Oh, crud, this is not hanging. Oops. Well, tactics, guys. Um, Alright. Oh, you don't have enough rated bullet games to... Wow. Okay. I didn't think that would be the case with these, like, big arena events. Didn't think they had all the same restrictions that other events have. That seems kind of counterproductive, because how are you supposed to get enough bullet games uh, if you can't join the arena? Um, regardless, I seem to be bleeding points left and right here, so I probably shouldn't accept challenges, lest it be, lest I get my account banned for repeatedly losing games. Uh, or somebody accused me of, like, throwing games to a particular opponent to inflate their rating or something stupid like that. All right. Oh no. Well, don't play Ultra Bullet. Ultra Bullet's bad for you. Okay. Let's go, go, go. Am I going to get another win? Just by default? But, but I want to beat Ace Rook. Um, oh crud, I should have done Bishop Takes. What was I thinking? I was not thinking. Okay, fine. We'll play games since we're insistent. Which kind of rewards the wrong behavior, but what can I do? And while we're at it, you know, let's play Rated, just to help you get out of your mode where you're not able to play other people. Oops, that's no good. Here we go. And I played C4 and C takes D5. That's a fun little way to activate the king. There's a tactic. Check. Alright. Alright, what's my opponent's move here? I'm threatening rook b1. Oh, is that mate? No, it's not. It just looks like mate. Alright, check. 
Um, I've got to have mate in one here somewhere. I'm kind of embarrassed to not find it. I mean, this is just check. There we go. Alright, we'll bail out of the tournament. Now, where's... I heard that there's a... Well, okay, we'll find you out on this list here. Cavern... C-A-V-E-R-N-O... Chasm. Okay. Let's challenge... Cavernous Chasm. Get him into this mode where he's able to play um, in these events. Alright, here we go. Ah, I have a video driver update available. Great timing. Now let's not do that. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's take this and back and this and... Um... Wait, am I hanging stuff? Maybe? Man, I'm missing a lot of good moves. It's kind of amazing how many good moves I'm missing. I should slow down a touch. There we go. Defense my knight. Uh, I don't have a mate in one. That's a shame. Where's my mate in one? There we go. Found it. All right. Well, we were kind of learning something, maybe. Ha ha! Behold my brilliant strategy. All right. Um. The cheese is real. There's so much cheese. Okay, there's a fork. There's a fork. There's a check, there's a check, here a check, there a check, everywhere a check. Okay, trap the king. Uh oh, king's getting out of the box. Alright. I need some more knights. But I have auto promote on, so what can you do? Okay. Well, I see a rematch offer, so here we go. Oh, no four move checkmate. Alright, so fine. I'm supposed to play good moves then. I have to be more sneaky next time. Uh, let's try this. Okay, and then we bring this. This is way, way different than playing in the Eastern Bullet Arena. 
Uh, here we go. Hit the queen. Oh, he didn't take. Okay. That's cool, I guess. Oh man, I missed a tactic. Okay, let's deal with problems instead of ignoring them. Check. Check. Not a check. Not a check. Oh, that is a check. Just kidding. Ha ha! There we go. The cheese. You have to master it. Alright, there's a pawn, there's a pawn, there's a king. Oh, that's mate in one. Alright, we'll take it. Alright. Oh, he spotted it. Clearly, he's paying attention this time. Uh, let's do this. Let's see, what does he do? The obvious. Alright. I guess we'll take that. Pin this, and then pin to win. Okay. Take one of these, and one of those, and push this and that, and... Activate this stuff. Alright, fine. We'll defend the pawn if we must. Um, let's see, can I snipe a pawn? I think so. Not seeing any check just yet. That's definitely an attack. And mate? Not mate. He's paying enough attention to delay the mate in one. So we go for this stuff. And over this way. Let's check. So I guess we'll have to block the check, and he checks me again. And maybe again, I don't know. Okay, so we win the bishop, but also just mate. Should have done that earlier. Okay, so let's play some good chess. Uh, this over makes more sense. Okay. Oh, there it is. I knew he was going to do that. It's like reading a book. Uh, some tricks are very easily telegraphed. Like if you bring your bishop to your back row, I'm going to question, well, what's he doing next? Often, that next thing is... Um, you trying to put your queen in front of it to deliver the mate. Just saying, that kind of stands out. Hey, welcome. Just playing some bullet games. Uh, with our new buddy here, Cavernous Chess, who seemed pretty insistent on playing some games. Um, don't know how long we're going to go for here. Um... Just check. Okay, can I mate? Uh, I guess I can't. I wasn't expecting a king move, but it actually kind of makes sense. Oh, let's break this open. Oops. Uh, like I was saying, let's defend our position so we don't lose everything. Okay, take our pawn. He didn't want my pawn. Okay. The pawn's defended, you know. Oh, that's interesting. That's a fun little move. Um, okay, fine. Fine. 
I can also play some fun moves. Like these. And then play f5 and maybe get my rook out. What's my rook doing on a1? The answer is nothing. Oops. Let's defend and attack simultaneously. I'm kind of in time pressure. It would help if these pieces move to the right squares. Yeah, so okay. Our buddy's kind of wisened up over here. Not sure if he was just toying with me earlier or what. Oh, okay, that's cool. I see. Alright. Yep, sure. He actually played a good one at the end there. So, caught us off guard, you know. But now we are back in the arena. Yeah, good games, I guess? But either way, I guess that gets you enough games that you can play in a tournament or something like that. Um... I'm not sure what entirely was going on there, but it was something that somewhat resembled chess. Um, oh, jeez. Oh, that doesn't actually lose material, though. Okay. Who the crap is playing this stuff? Like, this is... Interesting bullet theory. Okay, we take here. Um, my everything is hanging. Let's do this. So the idea is I want to take the e5 square, but taking that square is kind of challenging here. I'll just take d3 instead. Okay. Oh, let's bring the knight forward. Knights are useful pieces. They're also tricky pieces. Okay, I'll take one of these. Even though this kind of puts me off sides, just a touch. Um, oh, that's mate. It's been there like five turns in a row or something. Um, this does help me with over the board play, I feel, but does it certainly hurts my online play. But I think it helps me with over the boards, just so I'm not completely out of it over the board. But, yeah, I will say, like, I was invited to play in this bullet arena, um, and uh, we did start off the arena playing against Ace Rook, uh, the number one seed, who's pretty good at bullet, turns out. And for those who didn't know, yeah, Ace Rook is pretty good at bullet. Um, but it seems like a lot of players who play in this arena are pretty decently strong at this. Um... Okay, how do I defend everything? I'm just trying to get my knight onto d4. Um, or maybe I play f5? I'm not sure. Just trying to get my knight onto d4, that's all I'm trying to do here. Okay. Let's see if this... Oh, he's going to play a4. I should have seen that coming. Uh, let's deflect this bishop. Which might give me the ability to play f5 at a later stage. Okay. This is some pretty awesome positional bullet. Um... I 
I have no idea what's going on here. Oh, there's mate. Okay. Also, I'm pretty bad at bullet. Um, if that wasn't clear. But Aceric invited us. We're going to play his bullet event. I say his because like, he's the strongest player in it. But also because he offered the invitation. Okay, this is kind of weird. We're going to see G4. Nope, no G4. Oh, now G4. No, you could just take my queen. Or I could take his bishop. Um, brilliant strategy there. Hang your queen. If they don't take your queen, you can sometimes take things. Um, it's not the best way to play chess. That would be called hope chess. Okay, so pawn takes pawn. No. Okay. He's going to castle. He castles. Alright. Let me take this pawn. And then we push the H pawn. Uh, I guess I'll castle one way or the other, maybe. And then we just tuck the king over here. Oh, but this loosens the d8 rook. Um, why would you go into this endgame, sir? What could possibly motivate a person to select this particular endgame? Do I not have cheapos here? I guess I don't. It only looks like I do. No, but there are, are like under a hundred people in this event, so the fact that like most of these people are strong should not surprise me then. Given just the immense population that Lee Chess has, it makes sense that a few uh, like 50 some players would all be good at bullet. Interesting move. Okay, let's just forget about b2. Um, hit the rook. And... Queen trap! Oh, that is nice. Nice. <laughs> Accidental queen trap. I was hoping to do a discovery, but it actually worked out better the other way. So... Um, yeah, we'll take the queen trap there. Uh, I feel like I'm playing Zug moves. He plays the most outlandish strategies, and they work most of the time, too. He's just that good at calculating stuff. Um, Didn't see that coming, now did you? That's a windmill. That's a queen giving a windmill. How often do you see that? Oh, that's a nice tactic, bishop g5, just winning a queen in the opening. I think that's called a pin. I trapped my bishop. Furthermore, I can't play bishop h3. Alright, so we'll go back. Yeah, go ahead and take it. Okay. So, I have to take this so I can get my bishop onto c5. Okay, what's his plan? Is this the plan? Let me know how that plan works. 
So, let's just keep attacking stuff. Alright, um, G6 is next. Okay, he's, he's in full scale retreat mode. Meanwhile, I'm threatening knight e5 and knight f3 stuff. I guess I'm not going to f3, but um, it looked like I was. Alright, and I don't know. Let's plug the knight up here. Okay, he does go pawn grabbing. Interesting. I didn't expect that. Oh, no pawn grab. Okay. Well, that's even less unexpected, or more unexpected, or less the more the thing, you know? Um, okay, let's go back, see if he takes it. He takes it. That's a free pawn. It's confusing. I can play good moves sometimes. Here, let me turn off Flux, which is just dimming my monitor too much so I can't see what I'm doing. Oops. Well, that was a blinding light there while we were switching from Flux on to Flux off. Um, Alright, so just activate all the pieces. Hit the square. Uh, if only I could get my rook into play. That would make this a lot different. Um, oh, I've managed to accidentally protect my c4 bishop. Okay. So he lines up himself into a knight fork, so we'll take his queen. Assuming there's nothing better, and there isn't, so a queen will do. Um, here, let's just start taking things. So I'm threatening to take the bishop and then take the knight. Okay, I'm actually taking the bishop and then taking the knight. I should not have pre-moved that, by the way. That was a very risky pre-move. Okay, so now we just go for the king. This knight has like no squares. Uh, so there's a check, and there's a mate. So what are the odds that we're going to get another ace rook pairing? Probably not very good, because we spent so much time playing another opponent. Um, but this has made our arena just a touch easier to play, hasn't it? Okay, let's, let's try to do a h-file hack. Nobody suspects the h-file hack. Okay. Generally, a3 is inadvisable, but we're playing it anyway. Okay, so let's open the file. Get my queen over here, and just sack sack mate, you know? Sometimes chess can be easy. No, you should just play rookie eight. I don't have anything here. I just have smoke and mirrors. Um, but it looked pretty cool, didn't it? Alright, so we'll hit the bishop. It's just going to block the diagonal. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm kind of out of ideas here. Oh! <laughs> he walked right into my only idea. Okay. Well, we'll run with it. Bishop takes. 
Yeah, good choice. Makes the stream more exciting for everybody when they actually fall into mates. Uh, Who moves this fast? Acerc moves this fast. Who else moves this fast? I don't know. Uh, uh, let's block that. Oh, that's good. That's a good move. Surprisingly resourceful. Um, Oh my god, I'm so bad at end games. <laughs> oh, that was such bad technique. Such bad technique. Okay. There we go. Well, it wasn't Ace Rook, though. It makes sense that it would not be. I would not be shoving around Ace Rook if I had the black pieces. He did move fast, though. We'll give him that. Um, okay. Defend against the one threat. Make one threat. Let's get the king castled and hang our bishop, you know? Just to make things exciting. Um, oops, this is far more exciting than I wanted it to be. Uh, that's not good. Why am I playing such bad moves? It's like I'm not looking at my opponent's threats long enough. Um. There we go. I can play good moves sometimes. Um. Hmm. Oh, that is kind of problematic now, isn't it? Just a bit. There we go. Beat him on time. All right, we're on our way to the... Oh, Ace Rook's not in first? Why is he not in first? What happened, Ace Rook? What's going on?
Well, it's not even weak. Oops. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I continue to compound my mistakes, so that's pretty bad too. Okay. Nice. Recommendations for a player trying to improve the game. Um, openings are the weakest part of my game by like 400 rating points. Um, I'd recommend visiting a chess club and or a library, learning from other people's experiences because um, anything I could recommend for you would probably be bad. Um, I guess that's my recommendation. Uh, earlier this stream I did analyze one of my games I just ended up playing over the board recently where on move two I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I was trying to have a plan, it's just I thought I knew what I was doing and it turns out I really didn't. Um, oops. Yes, he did have knight d2 checkmate. Uh, I wanted to see the checkmate. I did not want to fight out a queen down endgame. I risked knight d2 mate several times there. And um, I guess fortune favors the bold or something like that. Um... Should have put the rook on e8. My mistake. Watch, I'll find a way to win this. Oops, uh, this might be difficult to win. Damn it, I pre-moved that. I pre-moved that and I still lost. Well, I'm bad at bullet. That's what it comes down to. Alright, so we got a player who's crazy enough to go berserk against us. Um, don't know who that would be. Maybe it's Lance. <laughs> Lance would not play bishop h2. Um, what? What's going on here? Other than everything. This got complicated. Oops. Dude, we beat Ferrari. Nice. That'll show a 2200 to go berserk against us. I was not trolling on purpose that game. I was legitimately struggling that entire time. Um, that was quite a game. I guess my low rating or something must have tricked him into thinking he could go berserk against me, but I think he knows who I am now. 
Alright, how do we do the H pawn hack again thing? Or thing again? Okay. I'm just hoping there's a mate here somewhere. Like, Queen H3 looks daunting. Um. Hmm. He doesn't have knight f4 because I have queen h7. That's a queen. All right, nice. Oh, how do chess clubs work? Um, you go to like, um, how do I explain how a chess club works? People go to a place and they play chess. Some places they run tournaments. Some places people charge money for lessons. Some places people charge money for admission. Some places you just play for free. Um, out of the courtesy of some benefactor who um, gives the club a place to operate. Um, uh, sometimes they have a lot of structure there, sometimes it's a lot more free form. Um, often you'll find people will play fast games of chess, uh, or blitz chess there. Okay, what's my opponent doing? My opponent's up to something. I keep delaying that one capture because I know as soon as I do the capture, um, their piece is unwind. Oh, oopsie daisy. Oh shit. This is not good. Okay, you win. Well played, Ace Rook. Damn it! We got another Ace Rook pairing. Ace Rook beat us again. Ah, oh, well. That's what I get for trying to talk about things in play. It's supposed to be entertaining for people, but it makes things a little more challenging on my end. Uh, it'd be better if I were just good at bullet. It'd make it a lot easier for me to commentate while I play. Without, like, dropping everything. <laughs> um, but being good at bullet is a difficult thing to do. Uh, playing on Lee Chess has been more fun, though, since I've um, not cared as much about my rating. Like, this Zen mode is definitely... An, an improvement because um, I can continue playing not worry about who I'm playing against continue playing aggressively against anyone really and then when I lose I'm like oh well that makes sense it was ace rook <laughs> um, I could take the bishop but I was going for mate here okay so he's going to go back he does not go back alright um it is kind of uneventful, though, when I lose and then afterward I realize who I lost to. Um, like, how do you build up the drama if you can't see who your opponent is? Uh. Oops. I walked square into that. Okay. We'll plug the file again. Fine. Whatever. Victory! Just have to play unpredictable queen moves. 
Uh, it's a way to quickly gain time on the clock. Okay, and c5, and then we drop our knight back. Right. Uh, shoot. Oops, this is kind of scary. Oops, there goes a exchange. Um, playing much too fast here. Is he going to let knight g4 happen? Rather, is he going to play f4 encouraging knight g4? Oh, it's my move. Never mind. No need for speculation then. Okay. Ah, uh, shit. Hmm, rook d8. Just considering rook takes pawn and then thought better of it at the last instant there. Nice! We got him! You got Ace Rook. So many cheapos. He's not going to be happy about that. <laughs> I feel bad for him, though, because like, he was actually kind of sort of winning the event, and my cheapos detract from his amazing track record in this tournament. Oh, man. Jeez. That was difficult. Sorry for the lack of commentary. I think he's taking me a little too for granted. No, not on purpose, but it's just exhausting playing accurate moves after accurate moves. And there's only so much bullcrap you could predict. And I just overloaded his um, predictor logic stuff, whatever. I threw way more uh, stuff his way than he could have expected. Um, or any reasonable player could have expected. That was an awful lot of crap. Just have to slowly move that queen up, you know, when you've got time. <laughs> Alright, we got 42 points. That's the answer to life, the universe, and everything. 42. Also, the number of um, times Ace Rook is going to beat me in a row uh, now that I have a win against him. Wait, this actually works? Oh, jeez. I didn't think this was any good. I thought incorrectly. Oh, shit. That was no good either. I don't know my bullet openings, guys. Um, no castle, though. Oops. This could hurt. 
This could hurt a touch. Gotta hustle him somehow, guys. Where's the hustle? How do I hustle? Uh, let's see. Rookie 2? No rookie 2. Bummer. I didn't even see the mate in 2 there. Alright. Gotta do all the hustle stuff, you know. Okay, let's defend this. And we've escaped the opening alive. Oops, let's do this then. Guys, we got an end game. Guess who's good at end games? Capablanca is good at end games. I'm okay at them. Victory is mine. <sighs> yeah, it is reassuring to see that 2,000 rated players drop things in bullet. It's possible that... People keep making the claim that Leech S ratings are inflated. It, there is actually some merit to the claim. 2,000 doesn't mean a player who do, never hangs pieces. Um... Okay, this position sucks. I'm going to do something to change that. Okay. Bishop got pinned there.
Okay. Cool, so we got a draw there. I'll take it, despite the time pressure. Maybe my opponent could have flagged me. Probably, if that's all they were trying for, they could have, but... Um, This might not have been a sound opening choice. I'm trying to win before the tournament concludes um, and taking some pretty extreme risks along the way. No, that's a completely empty threat on my part. It does not work. Um, I have no idea what's going on in this position. And we did not win before the tournament concluded. Congratulations to Ace Rook on his excellent victory. Even though we beat him once, and that's all that really matters. So, yeah. Well played, everybody. Um, I'm going to cool down. Hopefully not get invited to another bullet event. We cannot possibly conclude on that note. Um, Jeez. My head is spinning from that. That's okay. Probably should have dinner at some point. What time is it? Oh, yeah. Dinner might be a good idea, but why do dinner when you can do chess? All right, so the Eastern Super Blitz Arena. Sounds like an excellent successor to that. Or the Hourly Hype Ultra Bullet. Um, let's see, is there a thematic blitz thing that I can join. Oh, here we are, Sicilian Blitz. Because you know how much I know about the Sicilian. I actually kind of sort of know a thing or two, but not nearly enough. Um, yeah, it's similar to work in other open source projects. Um, it's pretty similar. We use standard development tools. Um, typically you will need a mouse and keyboard. Um, but also, um, I don't know, it's a very, very large project. Uh, there are onboarding instructions for those interested in installing all the dependencies, as well as, there we go. Yeah, oh, I go first. Uh, in order to be able to contribute, you practically need to do an installation of LeechS onto your server. Um, and if you can manage to do that and then test things and produce um, very high quality code, you can make con contributions to uh, the source code. But most contributions aren't in the form of source code. Um, because, uh, I mean, I'm not a web developer. Um, I mostly do AI related things with LeechUs. Um, and I have contributed some Scala code, but Scala is not my forte. Um, but I had to create unit tests, basically, for LeechS to accept my Scala changes. Uh, I have contributed some CSS changes to fix formatting of some pages when word wrap and word break and such didn't work properly, or line break and word wrap, rather. Um, which involved consulting a lot of online sources of documentation to figure out the standards, but um, LeechS is pretty complicated as far as code goes. Um, but yeah, I guess for those um, 
experienced people who understand Scala and stuff and um, yeah there, it is certainly possible to contribute as a developer um, most of the contributions to Leech Us though are uh, at least I think most of them are in the form of updating the translations for all our various languages many people have contributed in that vein so I got my opponent thinking which either means I'd play this opening right or I've done something so terribly wrong that they are stumped um, but I've spent 20 seconds probably because um, I've been playing bullet the last hour and I mean look at oh that is kind of hanging but kind of not I could actually trap the bishop if it took there um, so I'm kind of operating on inertia here um, which is kind of fun but risky at the same time alright so f2 is kind of loose wait so I'm no, I can't go b3 here, but queen b1 seems reasonable. So I don't walk into this knight to b4 fork. <sighs> so part of the motivation I have for actually playing in this event um, is I still feel bad about not handing over all the viewer stays for because I'm going to play a little bit more chess. To say it wasn't all about me trying to defeat Ace Rook, um, even though that was pretty fun. He's like done so many bullet streams, um, so it's only fair that I do one. Um, it's been curious if you can make an engine play at a low level like a human. Yeah, yeah. There, check out several. I mean, search the internet. You'll find that there are like four or five different active projects all targeting doing machine learning uh, for chess all most of them are named with some combination of the words alpha and zero in them um, and I'm not just talking about the official DeepMind code which is not publicly available but numerous enthusiasts have tried to replicate DeepMind's efforts for some reason but also look into this program by the name of Adversarial Chess, um, which does more or less what you're trying to do, but has already been fully coded. Uh, you just need to run it. Okay, so that's a bishop. How long has that been there? Hey, we won a game. Amazing. I'm the best Sicilian defense blitz arena blitzer, I guess. Oh, I am actually kind of like the number one seed or something here. Now, there's All Knight, All Knight 87, rated 2200. There's this weird name, 2101. So there are some strong players in this event. So, there's actually reason for me to play it. It's not just me pwning other players. It's There are many strong players in this. Many being at, like, at least three. Alright, so... Waiting on a pairing? People probably have opinions as to whether or not I played that C3 Sicilian accurately. I think like that's the second C3 Sicilian I've ever played, ever. Um, I could be mistaken. Wait, White's King is trapped in that game. That's a really cool position. Because there's like, well, no, there is no stalemate there, so never mind. It's pretty boring. Just kidding. So they're going to play D4 here. If they play d4, I'll actually get to play... Oh, never mind. No d4. Okay. Hmm.
My, what a strange choice of moves. Okay, we're playing a dragon, guys. I don't know the dragon. Oh, but White Castle Kingside, so he's not playing the most theoretical line either. Bummer. Okay. Well, I'll take this, because that seems like a thing you probably do in a dragon, right? And like Bishop d7 or something? And d5 equalizes in all Sicilians, so I guess we play d5. Um, hopefully this is right. Yeah, I wasn't kidding when I was saying I'm playing on inertia here. Um, Alright, bishop takes. Now... I guess all my options are pretty bad here, but it's a matter of finding the least bad one, which I think is bishop takes. And yeah, I am giving up some material. No, I could play rook b8 here. It's not necessary for me to gambit stuff. I had intended to play bishop a6, but that was not necessary. Okay, can I pile up on this d5 square? Um, no, let's not go for cheapos. Chess Titan level 5. <laughs> uh, that's... Wait, are you referring to Chess Titans? The Microsoft software, or are you referring to some other piece of software, Chess Titan. Because it wouldn't surprise me if there were multiple engines all by the name of Titan. Oh, sorry. Um, back to machine learning. I think the more interesting salient point is that... Um, you could use machine learning to train a player on what mistakes um, makes a difference to that particular player. To give like personalized coaching recommendations as opposed to just trying to make somebody that plays like a human. Although the two tasks may be interwoven or causally related somehow. Um, I think the more interesting task of those two would be training a human player. Um, okay, so... Hmm. F7 is kind of loose. But this is an open file. So queen e2 was not possible last turn. Obviously they're fishing for h7 here. Um, it's hard to blame them for fishing. Fishing is fun. Um, so what's my big plan in this position? I've got the bishop pair. Um, wait, uh, I guess I need to defend stuff. Okay, so I think this defends all the things. It looks scary, because there's knight takes, pawn takes, rook takes, which probably actually just wins material outright. Um, but they didn't find it, so... There was no reason to be afraid. Um, let's see. Oh, here's a tempo. Here's a tactic. See this? I hit the rook. I also am still hitting this knight. So their only move to save both would be rook g4. Um, because this just wins some peace. 
But had they even seen rook g4, I probably still have h5 and h4 and f5 and stuff just messing with their rook and maybe winning an exchange somehow. Yeah, natural language processing, maybe. It's probably... Natural language processing is a field that sounds exciting until you start trying to do something with it. Um, like Chess Master was able to make recommendations that sounded like natural language, but that did not require natural language processing. That just required natural language output. But if it's to take input from a chess player, like in the form of a question, uh, yeah, then you do need to start adding processing. Wait, can I not just win more material? What have I missed? Like, I've got queenie one mate threat. Um, I'm attacking their queen. I'm attacking rook takes d1. Um, okay, so I've trapped the queen, and I'm threatening rook d1 mate. And even if they could take the bishop, I'd just take the rook. But they don't have time to do that. So, yeah, this possibly was not calculated accurately. Who is this? Okay. That's the name of our opponent here. Uh, they were just thinking through their next move very carefully. Because this next move is pretty important. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, I guess that is kind of important. They did find a way out. Okay. You want to trade? We can trade. Thankfully, I still have that other pawn able to capture there. <laughs> or that could have been bad. Um... Okay. Well, I think we're slightly ahead in this position. Um, yeah, let's check here, just to make sure we're ahead. Okay, there's the resignation. There it is. Oh, this is the hyper-accelerated dragon. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, if we were up a rook and stuff, you know, that would be a reason for the opponent to resign. <laughs> Only if, um, or rather, just make a decision between playing moves or resigning. Because <laughs> sitting and thinking doesn't really improve those positions too much. Okay. Knight c6. That's not knight c6. Uh, I don't know what to do. Do I take that? Do I take that and then play knight c3? Do I play knight c3 first? Because that would help me develop faster. Um, I think I take that. Because I don't necessarily... Well, I see. I take and they play knight f6. And I can't hold the pawn, so pushing e5 makes more sense here. Okay. <laughs> Mikhail Tall, probably. Wait, that was something I posted in the Lee Chess forums like an eternity ago, right? Or is that one of the uh, pre-tournament messages? I hope not, because I'm pretty sure he did 
Let's actually say that. That sounds like something I put in the Lee Chess forums. Uh, okay, so this is a free pawn. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, great minds think alike, so if Tall recommends sacking pieces, it's all it's all good by me. Uh, let's see. So apparently I'm giving back the pawn. Oh, but I get the B7 pawn, so ha. This is all planned from the very beginning. Such a masterful strategy. Uh, one that involves plenty of running away. Uh, do I have... Okay, so my E pawn is more than a bit loose at this point. Um... Alright, we'll take this to try to hold on to our E pawn. Okay, and then... I thought I had a part two to this. Apparently I don't. How do you improve your rating? Um. I had a little bit of formal lessons. I've partaken in chess clubs since chess was invented. Um, I've analyzed without a computer, and then afterward, with a computer, every one of my tournament games, every one of my match play games, every one of my slow games. I've analyzed every one of those. I've read... Um, about 30 different books about end games, or it feels like that. Um, I've taught chess classes. So as to like what specifically? Uh, just a lot of hard work and advice from good people. Um, What was my routine like? Uh, my routine... <clears throat> well, I guess I kind of covered that. Um, oh, my FIDA ratings like 2,000-something. Well, I could play Bishop... E I could, but it's not that great but maybe I should anyway. He does knight f takes. This is not so good. Hmm. Alright, this is a gambit. Which I totally did on purpose. Favorite chess book. Oh man. Wow. That is tricky. Favorite chess book. Um. Hmm. Sorry, I'm a bit distracted here. Oh, howdy. Welcome. I'm just being asked what my favorite chess book is after hanging a rook. Um, there are tons of good books out there. One of them that I've read numerous times that I did enjoy quite a bit uh, was actually Josh Waitzkin's Attacking Chess of All Things. Um, it's not really the best technical manual on any subject, but it does explain how chess can be fun. Um, 
I guess, what was it? International Master, what was his name? D David Levy, um, How Computers Play Chess. Um, it was very interesting, explaining basically the first three decades of computer chess engine development. Um, yeah, it turns out that if, oh, there is a book which does talk about hanging pieces. Um, it's uh, top 10 most common chess mistakes and how you can avoid them um, by Grandmaster Evans, I think. And yeah, Hanging Pieces, I think, is somewhere in that book. It's a pretty funny book. Um, let's see. Oh, we get to play the main line thing. Okay, how does this go again? Like this or something? Yeah, Silliman's Complete Endgame Course is excellent. Um, let's see, what else is there? I was thinking, oh, there's Beyond Deep Blue. Uh, for anybody who has a doubt about um, Deep Blue actually improving between matches 1 and 2, this was written by the technical lead, the lead engineer um, who helped author Deep Blue version 2. Um, you might not learn very much about chess about, from it, but you might learn things about computers and how they work. Um, what would be another one? There's the Mammoth Book of Chess. Um, it's actually quite an excellent book. You learn a lot from reading it. Uh, covers like, if I remember right, it's like a thousand pages long and covers almost every subject um, in terms of chess strategy. Um, so it covers like openings, middle games, and end games. Um, Let's see, am I supposed to play rook c8 in the Sicilian? Sicilian's not my typical fare, but we're playing a thematic event to try to learn how to play openings better. And our opponents are just castling kingside. We got Van Perlo's Endgame Tactics. Uh, I've not read it, no. There's an Endgame book that I've not heard about? Dang. Um, shoot, I need to go visit a library. That sounds like it's a puzzle book, too, so that sounds entertaining. Oh, there's also the Encyclopedia of Chess Endgames. I would not recommend it for anyone. Um, unless you're, like, ridiculously obsessed with endgames. Um, in which case... I don't, still don't know if I'd recommend it. Um, let's see. I could play queen c8 here, right? And uh, here I'm winning a pawn. c2 is loose, b2 is loose, e4 is loose. They don't want to move the knight. Well, I'm sorry. If they move the knight... Um, then I don't get to take twice on c3, but if they move it, then I get to take on b2. And then go back to d4. Oh, well, I want a pawn. Forget the queen. Who needs that? Queens are overrated. Uh, we're having a fun time conversing. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Uh, I should maybe have dinner, you know. Okay, you win. Well played. Maybe. I'm just going to say that's because I don't know the Sicilian. Um, that could have gone better. <laughs> Oops. Hmm. See, so just distract me with talk about a good endgame book, and, like, there go all my rating points. 
Either that or it's just because I don't know the Sicilian. Oh, but now look, the guy I lost to is in first place in the event, so... Hmm. Think about that. <laughs> I think the tie breaks are currently ranked by... Um, rating... No, not by rating gain. By performance rating, I think. Or I think something like that. I don't know. So, moves like knight c6 and then queen d3 or something. I think this is it. And I think, like, the queen a5 somehow doesn't work. Be good to know the theory. For embarking on some ridiculously dangerous opening. Uh, I might not be lost yet. Um, let's see. Yeah, I made I made a recommendation, which I'd thought about for like a half hour to an hour before actually recommending. Uh, yes, I lose the pawn here. Whatever. I thought it was a well considered recommendation, and after I offered it, like nobody read it. But I don't know. Such is fate. I'd actually like done research on what are all the various tiebreak systems that are used and what might make sense for this kind of format. And at least I learned some things along the way. Um, also, the other terrible thing is that like rating gain in a Glico system. Um, depends on what your initial rating and your initial rating deviation are. So, like, um, assuming that Glico is correctly implemented, um, which might be a big assumption in itself, because for there to be a proper um, Glico implementation, there has to be such a thing as a rating period during which all games are simultaneously rated and or re-rated based on other outcomes in the same rating period. Um, I don't think that I've seen that, but I don't know. It's complicated. Alright, can I just take on d5? I want to take on d5. I want to do this more, though. This looks more fun than taking on d5. <sighs> okay, so then we just like pile up over here. And our opponent moves their king forward. Yep, yep. And then we bail. So, yeah, basically, um, if you're a new player, you gain more rating points than if you're a well-established player for the same outcome. Did taking a d5 work at all? Kind of, sort of, not really. Um, here it might work. Here my opponent's position is just completely collapsing. So I think this is worth trying. Plus, they're never expecting this, so... And this bishop is just terrible, so... Two pawns for a bishop is not bad. Okay. We've got a wise guy on our hands here. Um, it's the second time I've dropped that rook in this same tournament. Okay. So, maybe I should put more effort into this tournament or something. Oh, in two games? I don't even remember what happened last game. I've done so well suppressing it. But you're probably right. Um, so we're down eight points here, but soon to collect a rook. 
so that puts us down just three points. And if I manage to collect the knight, then it's kind of a wash. Um, so can I do rook d6? Well, if I can't, I'm lost, so we have to try it. <laughs> like, if I play rook c1, they have bishop f5, and that's just game. So we're going to go with this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess that could be. So, do I play knight c7, or do I play knight b6? Or do I play... like b4 can't be any good here. We need our knight active. Um, yeah, it's gotta be knight b6 if there is anything. And this way, if they take on b2, we've got knight a4, and we get to collect that nice little bishop. The risky aspect of this is that if I can't go to a4, this knight doesn't have a future. So, a knight that's not on the rim is pretty dim. Um, I think that's how the saying goes. Alright, so do I have b4 check? Does b4 check help me in any way? Not really. They did put their bishop where I thought they would put the bishop. Um, mm -hmm. Wait, do I have a mate here? Knight a4, king b5, rook b6, king a4, bishop d6, threatening b3 mate. No, b3 first, king a3, bishop d6. No, it's not there. Feels bad. All right, so we'll try this. Subtle, subtle mate try. Okay, so knight a4 is the threat. Kind of hard to combat. Um, if this works, I'm kind of an accidental genius, so I hope it works. All right, so there's the check. Oh, the king b4, and then they intercept the stuff with, like, knight b5. Assuming they're paying attention. Which, they aren't. So we just go mate. Nice. Um, so if knight c3, knight e2, knight takes knight. Knight c3, knight f3 is the way out. So... I have to do this. I think. Does that work? Does any of this work? Why are these positions so complicated? Oh, jeez. I'm so confused. And there's no increment either. So I think 96 rook takes knight is how this is supposed to go. It's not how this is going to go, but, um, right. I don't know, I have to do something. Well, it looks like he's paying attention. Also, there's multiple ways to uh, prevent that mate. Um, But that might not be one of them. So c3 is forced. I might not be winning this. Whoops.
There we go. Nailed it. All right. <coughs> Theoretical draw. That's why it helps to know your endgame theory. You'd be amazed what cheapos you can pull off with a little bit of theory. The idea is if you can hang in an endgame long enough, your opponent just might mess up. But you don't want to like spring the stalemate trap too early. You want to save it for just the right moment. Dude, how? Have you not seen that I have a rating? Ratings let you do amazing things. You just bluff your opponent into like all kinds of stuff. Um, all right, so this is loose. This is like super loose, this whole diagonal. All right, can I knight g4? Could, but don't want to. Um, queen b6, though, is interesting. This probably loses a piece to knight f5. Oh, I look closer. No. Yeah, knight f5, I can't take that. Um, if I could take e4 here. Let's do it. YOLO. Because our opponent's not calculating either. Um, there we go. It's only fair. Alright. Well, so now we got our knight pinned. Um, I guess... <laughs> There's no simple way to extract myself from this pin. Um, there's a... No, there's not even a complicated way out. Well, there is one way out, and it's e5. This gives back the pawn, but avoids losing a piece, so... Sorry about that not calculating thing. It's not happening. Um, so, yeah, we just castle, and he takes, and we take, and he takes, and we take, 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 and something happens. Um... All my pieces are underdeveloped. Hmm. This looks sketchy. I mean, there's the knight fork, but I don't have any mate stuff there. I should just play chess. Just play boring chess moves. Gotta bore him to death. Okay, so... Uh, C7 looks like a square that you go to. No, it's not useful here. Let's go to c6 instead. We actually hit a thing or two. Oh, what is this? Um, yeah, this is just a blitz game with a hyper-accelerated dragon, which is an opening that I know um, as much about as insert your favorite metaphor here. Um, okay, we have to exchange, and hey look, we got an equal end game, which means we're going to win this, guys. You got to know them end games. So, Black's point here is that Black needs to push the king side and completely ignore what White is doing over here. Just, like, completely forget about it. Just push the king side. That's the plan. Okay. White's actually threatening to try to uh, exchange or attack a lot of things here, so we have to liquidate some of the pressure. But again, just don't touch anything on the queen side. Just keep pushing uh, these pawns forward. Put them on dark squares. Right. So we get tempo for free. Okay. I actually have to do something about this. But what do we do? Do I do bishops to defend this? No. I actually have to move it. Only because I get to do so again with tempo. 
Uh, my threat here is bishop d7 trapping a rook. Although not winning it. Um, just putting it under a lot of pressure. Oh, but then he's got rook d5. So before we fall for that, um, let's... Wait, do I just go back in here? No, he goes bishop e4 then. So yeah, let's activate this rook. And then we can divert our bishop with gain of tempo. And if we exchange rooks on d5, king e5 also gains a tempo. So you'll find many free tempi in endgames um, if you study them. Okay. So does rook c6 win a pawn? Or does it not win a pawn? Um, that looks... Well, it doesn't quite win a pawn. Um, let's see. That's a bit unpleasant. All right, I guess I should just continue pushing on the king's side. Because I can't improve the position of my king here. Um, where all my pieces are as well placed as they can get. But my opponent's going to do bishop e4 next. So I need to have something prepared for that. Um... That's kind of hugely problematic. Jeez, that sucks. Um, I guess I have to take this. I really don't want to do that. Because I need every tempo I can get in this endgame. It's going to be a race. Okay, so this is a free tempo, right? Hitting this, trying to provoke g3 or something. Um, hmm. I think I barely win the race. Having this exchange does help me win the race. And then they do bishop c4, we do king e4, and bishop c4 is a lost tempo, which um, should help me make sure that I have the outside passer so I'm able to snap both of these king queenside pawns. Um, right, so chasing on the queen side doesn't yet work out. Um, now, did I do king c5? I don't remember. He's still in the square, so we have to do this. Um... Hmm, I guess it's going to be a draw, in all likelihood. Okay, so we get our draw. What's more drawish, a rook and same color bishop, or a rook endgame? Um, definitely the rook endgame. Yeah, rook, one rook is uh, more drawish than rook and bishop. I think rook and bishop is even more drawish than two rooks, although two rooks can be pretty... Two rooks depends a lot on the position. Um, queen endgames are rarely drawn. Like, 
there's many, many perpetual ideas, sure, but only if all the pieces are in exactly the right spots. Um, there are many formations to get out of a perpetual. All right, so we're going to try this. This time I'm not going to do something too silly. I'm just going to back up and not lose a pawn in the opening. So we got two draws in a row, was it? Anybody want to guess if we're going to get a third draw here? Certainly we're up on time. The reason I'm playing so quickly is because there's like six minutes left in this tournament. Okay, now see my opponent's rating is pretty high. I'm still trying to crush him before um, the tournament ends, but that might not be a good strategy given his rating. Oh, we're going to get three quarters of a point. So we're going to get like docked some points based on style or something. So I got the d5 square. Well, clearly, in response to that 0.75 point comment, I'll just have to tank this game just to show you. <laughs> Hedging your bets. Okay. Um. So, stuff, and things, and stuff. Does my opponent never play this opening? Um, okay, you got a knight on d4. What's your point? Oh, there's a fork. That's kind of cool. Um, I guess I go back. The knights look like aardvarks. I'll let them know. I'll tell them that they look a lot like aardvarks. And we'll see if they do anything to change their appearance for next time. Um. Well, it looks like I'm not going to win this before the tournament ends, because um, our opponent surely can't blow this position in, like, two minutes. It would take a more dedicated effort to find a way to lose this. So, let's see. Here, let me just put my knight over here. <laughs> and if they play b5, I just... Wait, no. Bishop to c3 does not win a queen. It'd be nice if it did. Um... So we just keep shuffling our pieces. It's as if I almost kind of sort of know what I'm doing, I guess. Only because, like, it's kind of rare for me to shove around a 2000 like this. And even better, um, it's not like my position's full of weaknesses or something. Wait, I could take on e5. Probably should have done that already. There we go. Brilliant. Probably should have done that a long time ago.
Ooh, our opponent sacks. That's fun. All right. Um, here, let's continue the fun. Okay, let's save our bishop. Obvious threat is obvious. What's less obvious is what to do about it. Which is king h7. That's not king h7. I can't believe he played b5. Like, what does b5 do? Other than try to distract me. So we're actually going to win this, apparently. Because there's a minute 30 left on the tournament timer, and a minute on my opponent's clock. Alright, good game. <sighs> tournament pairings are now closed. Well, not bad overall. I found a thing. <laughs> Check that out. It was on the number, on this tournament featured board. Who would have guessed? Um, should we analyze that game? Because I feel like I didn't do something right. Yeah. So I was playing so hastily in an endeavor to try to, like, win one of the top places in this tournament. Turns out you kind of need more points to win one of those. Um, eight points does not quite cut it. Now, if you were to take out the whole scoring system of double points for consecutive wins, maybe I'd score somewhere up there, respectively, but, um, yeah, tough break. On the other hand, that's pretty funny. I lost 34 points this tournament. Oops. You give me point eight five. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I worked hard for that. Kind of. All right. Oh man, I've got to make a user script or something that just like sticks me in first place regardless of what my standing is. Or better yet, puts me in the center podium and gives me a number there according to like whatever my ranking was. Uh, I've got to look into that. That'd be hilarious. All right, so opponent has graciously done the computer analysis thing for us. Um, I actually have a user style I've accidentally applied here, so I can't see uh, my counts of how bad I did. Uh, but apparently somewhere in here I must have made a bad move, right? It's not all just brilliancies. Bishop a3 is bad. I should have played h3, of course. And then knight d7, like, yeah. Clearly this is what I should have played. but. That opening mistake aside, um, bishop b4. All right, yeah, I was running out of ideas here. Um, oh, there it is. Duh. Okay. Well, what matters is that I eventually found it, and I found it before my opponent did. So, cool beans. And the knight e4 was an interesting try. Uh, which had one small complication, but otherwise would have been really good. So let's bookmark that one for posterity. Just when I think there are days that I don't know openings, I'll realize I can still play meme stuff and sometimes win. Um, I should bring that same confidence over the board, I guess. Not be afraid to play ambitious things, not be afraid to play sound things. I can actually play good moves when I put my uh, attention into it, but um, and a little bit of luck doesn't hurt either. But yeah, um, that's interesting though, like I would have thought bishop b2 would have been the best way to counteract this, but apparently h3 is reasonable so I don't like get hit by knight d g4 or bishop g4 stuff. 
and then this knight on d4 doesn't mean so much. Play the Latvian Gambit. Yeah, I've tried it. It's a bit ambitious. Um, I've played it in circles that have kind of, like, made it very difficult to play because they know the book out to move 20 or 25 or so. At that point, it becomes a little bit less fun to play that. And a little bit more fun to play stuff like this. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, it's been a fun session here. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, let me see if I can find somebody for us to watch next. Although, let's see. I know I generally tend to auto-host. Oh, Ace Rook. All right, Ace Rook's up. So let's go watch Ace Rook. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.